Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Max channel. I've had the privilege over the last year to work with nine different 3D printers from a range of manufacturers in a range of prices using a variety of technologies. Five of those printers have been distributed by Monoprice. These are printers that Monoprice OEMs. Generally, they put their name on the front of the printer and they support these printers and distribute them worldwide. Today, I'm going to talk about these five printers and help you select the right printer for your first, second, or third 3D printer. Now, if you're not interested in a Monoprice printer, this video is still very interesting for you because I'm going to talk about the technologies behind these different printers, whether it's a direct extruder or it's a Bowden tube extruder, whether it's an SLA printer or an FDM printer. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. I'm going to begin with what may be my favorite printer to recommend to someone who's not technically focused, who might not be comfortable assembling a printer from a kit. They want something they can just take out of the box and it will work. Something that's supported by a large community, communities on Facebook, communities on the internet, supported directly by a manufacturer they can call and talk to. And that's the Monoprice Select Mini. This printer sells for, um, it's on sale right now for $149. There's a pro model of this printer, which is about $170. And I'd recommend the pro model. So this is a relatively small format printer at 120 by 120 by 120. That means on the X axis, on the Y axis and on the Z axis, you can print an object up to about 120 millimeters. To put that in perspective, this vase here is right about that height. You're not going to be printing big things on this printer. You can print though excellent um, small vases, uh, cookie cutters, children's toys, functional objects like hinges, and it's just a really good way to learn about 3D printing. One of the things I most enjoy printing on this printer are jewelry, our earrings for my granddaughters. Now, this is a Cartesian style printer. That means that the print object is moved on the printer in the X, the Y, and the Z axis. Now, in essence, it's really not the print object that's moved. It's the print head. And in this particular case, the Y axis back and forth is accomplished by moving the print bed and the Z axis up and down and the X axis sideways is accomplished by moving the print head. It is a Bowden style printer. The extruder is right here. There's a short Bowden tube. So the filament comes in here, it goes through this tube to the hot end, which includes the heater element, uh, the cooling mechanism, and the nozzle. Now, why do I like this printer? Because it just works. It's very easy to use. It's very easy to access. If something goes wrong, let's say filament jams in this hot end, it's really very easy to take out the Bowden tube and to uh, use a piece of filament or a needle to push through the hot end to clear out the hot end. So it's easy to work on and it's easy to use and it's fully assembled. It's also supported by Monoprice. Now let's talk honestly about what that means. Number one, it means that you can send any printer back pretty much for any reason during your first 30 days. And for a year, they will provide telephone support. Now, the people on those phones, they support a lot of different products. So don't expect them to be absolute experts in your printer, but they can help you with the basics and they can direct you to places to get answers. One of the best places to get answers for this printer um, is in a variety of Facebook groups and on the web. So if you just Google Facebook 
MPs Select Mini, you'll find lots and lots of options for support. So I highly recommend this printer to first time users. Let's go to the next small printer from Monoprice, and that's the Mini Delta. You'll, you'll notice this looks completely different. And the reason is the print head moves on these rods in all three directions. So the X, Y, and Z movement are all accomplished by moving the print head. That means the print plate, the bed, does not move at all. This is a Bowden style printer. It has an extruder. In fact, the extruder looks identical to the one on the Mini Select. These are both rebranded printers manufactured by a company called Malyan. You cannot purchase from Malyan directly, um, but they are distributed worldwide, in these two cases, by Monoprice. Now, this printer is not as easy to use. And the reason is that a lot of people have trouble getting things to stick to this print bed. In fact, I replaced the factory supplied print surface that was on here. I pulled it off and I put on a glass sheet covered by masking tape to give me better adhesion. The glass sheet or the glass plate adheres because I have a sheet of silicon on the back. So that's how I've solved the plate adhesion problem. But um, that means this printer might not be for everyone because it may not work perfectly right out of the box. What is the advantage of this printer over this printer? It's quite a bit faster. In general, Delta style printers, and this is the mini Delta printer from Monoprice, Delta style printers are a bit faster um, than Cartesian printers, this style of printer. This printer sells for about $160. The print area is also 120. Uh, I'm sorry, the print area is 110 and the height is 120. So basically you're printing things about the same size. As your first printer, I recommend this one. Now a lot of people love this printer for printing very small objects where they replace the nozzle, which is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle with a smaller nozzle, perhaps a 0.2 millimeter nozzle. Because the printer is inherently faster, even though they're printing with a smaller nozzle at lower layer heights, they still can get reasonable speed. So this is the Monoprice Mini Delta, and this is the Monoprice Select Mini. Now, let's look at something completely different. I'm gonna move these off to the side here. So we have a bit of room. And this, is the Monoprice Mini SLA printer. Now, an SLA printer, in this particular case, a masked stereolithography printer, a masked SLA printer, works completely differently. Instead of filament that is loaded through an extruder into, in these cases, a Bowden tube to the hot end, you have a vat, this vat right here, you have a vat filled with resin. Under that vat, you have an LED light, a UV light specifically. On top of that UV light, you have a screen. It looks like a phone screen, an LCD screen that is used as a mask. So if a dot of that screen, if a place on that screen is dark, it doesn't let the light through. If a place is light, it lets the light through. That allows the LED, the UV light from underneath, to project an image into the resin. You have a build plate, that's right here. The build plate goes into the resin to the height above the bottom you want your layer to be. So you have your build plate, you have a light that in essence is projecting an image on that surface. What's very interesting about mask SLA printers, there's really only one moving part and that's the Z axis that moves up and down. However, a trick that is very necessary for these printers is you have to make sure that when in the down position, this plate is completely level with the bottom of the vat. Many mask SLA printers make you do that manually. On this printer, there's an automatic mechanism for doing that. That's both a plus and a minus because that's probably the component on this printer that's trickiest to get working correctly. Now, I've only started 
reviewing this printer. I'll be talking about it more after the first of the year, but I can tell you that between the resin, which you shouldn't touch with bare hands, means you're using rubber gloves, plastic gloves, uh, latex gloves all of the time, and the fact that you have this liquid and it's sticky and gooey, and you have to get objects to stick to this plate by getting that height just right and perfectly level, between all of these characteristics, this shouldn't be your first printer. Where, why do people purchase mask SLA printers? Because they print unbelievable quality. Now, in general, they're slow, but they print unbelievable quality. So I'll talk more about this printer and in general mask SLA printers in the coming year. This is the Monoprice Mini SLA printer. And the Mini SLA printer, let's see here, I have a note card for this. Um, that sells for $199. Now, let's look at some larger printers. I'll move this also out of the way here. This massive printer is the Monoprice MP10 printer. It is a Creality CR10 clone. Now, the printer you're seeing here has a couple modifications made to it. I added the standard Creality angular support brackets to this to give it a little more support. And I did replace the extruder, which is a plastic extruder. Once again, it looks very much like the select mini extruder with an all metal extruder. Why did I do this? Well, this is a much larger Bowden tube. And I found the plastic extruder did not have enough force to give me a good quality print consistently at higher speeds. So I replaced it with a metal extruder. This was a generic metal extruder I purchased off Amazon. If I was to do this again, I would use the Simi CNC Easy Truder, which I've used on other printers and is an excellent third-party extruder to, to add to your printer. The advantages of this printer are it has a very large print area. So this is, has a print area of 300 by 300 by 400. And there is a mini version of the MP10, which is a print area that's 200 by 200 by 180. So architecturally, they're the same. The printer sells for, the full-size printer sells for $400. The mini sells for $300. So this is a CR10 cl clone. I don't recommend this as your very first 3D printer because it is a little bit more complex to tune this. But properly tuned, as you can see from this vase, you can print beautiful things. Now, for my purposes here, I've replaced the nozzle on my MP10 with a one millimeter nozzle. It comes stock with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and I use it for printing massive objects and very, very quickly because of the one millimeter nozzle. And in general, this is a pretty fast printer. So this is the Monoprice MP10. It's available in the full size you're seeing here and in the mini. When I need to print something and I wanna make sure it prints correctly the first time, I want it to print fast, I print it on my Ultimate 2. Now, I also have a Prusa MK3, which is another really great printer. And in my shop, the two fastest printers I have in terms of the amount of time it takes to complete a model are my Prusa MK3 and this Ultimate 2. Now, one of the reason is both of these printers are direct extruder printers. So what that means, instead of the filament going from we can take a look here, from an extruder through a tube to the hot end, the extruder is mounted right on top of the hot end. That means the filament has a shorter path. It also means there's less flexibility in that path, and so the printer can be run at higher speeds with good quality. This is the only fully enclosed printer I have in my shop. I will tell you that when I'm printing PLA, I open up the top cover door because otherwise I find the print area gets too hot and that causes a bit of drooping on certain types of overhangs with PLA. 
but it is a fully enclosed printer. And in fact, even the filament is inside. Now for me, that's a real advantage because I leave a roll of filament, a reel of filament, inside all of the time. This is Matter Hacker Orange Build PLA, wonderful filament. It printed this heart. I leave it in here all of the time, um, and that way, anytime I need a print, I just come down, load it to an SD card, and I'm off and running. This printer does ship with a, a customized version of Cura that's already configured for proper prints, and my first prints off this printer came out excellent. I have since copied the parameters from Cura, which shipped with this printer, which was 3.3, to Cura version 4.2. I might actually be on 4.3 now, um, and that worked without problem. So the Monoprice Ultimate 2 is a really good mid-range printer. It's towards the higher end of the hobbyist printer range, and this printer sells for, let's see here, this printer sells for $550. The print area is 200 by 150 by 150. So it's not the largest print area. My Prusa MK3 is a larger print area. And in fact, the Ender printers have larger print areas. Um, but this is the only fully enclosed printer I have, and it is much faster than the Creality Ender printers in terms of print speed, at least 20 or 30% faster. So folks, that's my lineup of 3D printers from Monoprice. They range from my Select Mini, which is the printer I recommend to people just getting started if they don't wanna have to do any assembly. If you're into kits, the Enderliner printers from Creality is a very attractive alternative. You get a lot of printer for the price, but if you want something you can take out of the box and just use, this is the printer I recommend. Um, I also showed you the Delta Mini printer, which is a very interesting architecture. It's a little trickier to set up than the Select Mini. I showed you this Mast SLA printer. Also, it shouldn't be your first printer, but if you want fine detail, a Mast SLA printer is a good place to look. This very large printer in the back here is the MP10. I love the ability to print large objects on the MP10. As I said, I replaced my 0.4 millimeter nozzle with a one millimeter nozzle so I can print very large vases quickly. Um, this is just a beautiful, beautiful print. And then one of my favorite printers, which is not an inexpensive printer at $550, is the Ultimate 2, fully enclosed, uh, great detail, good speed. Well, folks, I hope you learned something today. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Share this video. Share it on social media. Email the link to your friends. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell. Thanks again. Leave lots and lots of comments. And let's continue to learn things together.